we can get you in the field first, no problem. Just pay for it out. Okay, for just kind of starting over for some of the people that have been here before, when you get set up, if you've heard of the term natural point of aim, it's where you get set up where you, you're as comfortable as you can be behind the rifle, like Jim said, these firing lines are uh, a little on the lumpy side and uneven, so you have to make the best of what you can. Um, you want to get set up so that you're naturally pointing at the target. I mean, you can close your eyes, relax, open your eyes, and you should be pointing probably within a target width, one way or the other of the target. That's usually a pretty good metric. Um, different people at different positions. I usually like to load a little into the gun, into the gun. Other people pull back, but whatever works for you. Um, if you're shooting single load or anything else like that, you'll get your stuff set up where you're not having to go reach for crap. Every time you got to get out of position, roll over to do something else, and you can come back, you have to start over, rebuild everything. The less time you spend doing the, you know, flailing around on the ground, the better off your consistency is going to be. So we've got zero wind on the gun right now. We've got the focus set. If you have a solid rest set that you can, you want to check your parallax, which either if you have a front adjustable scope like this one or side focus, your rear focus should already be set. You probably shouldn't have to screw with that unless you're hot gunning between two, you know, more than one person. But the focus up, the actual parallax, you set up, you look at like the corner of the target or something, bob your head a little bit. Once it's set and everything's in the same plane, that dot shouldn't move, or your crosshair shouldn't move around on the target at all. When you're moving between 400, 500, 600, whatever else, it, it's something to keep in mind. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get it where it doesn't wiggle, because otherwise your point of impact is going to be dependent on your head position a lot more than it will be otherwise. So, and one of the things I put in that document, these numbers up here are very rough. Um, as you can see on my scope right now, it claims it's just over 300 where the parallax is set at. We know the target's basically 400. You know, it's it's a rough value. Don't say, oh, I have my parallax set to 400 yards. I must be good. You know, think, look at it, confirm it. Um, we have elevation on here. Hopefully, we're on the right revolution. And so, spotter, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, walk me into whatever you want me to look at here. Okay, so we have the center group of large three trees with the one leaning in the middle. Okay. Bottom, right in the center of those three trees at the berm, okay. there's a black stop sign with a white dot in the center of it. Got it. Confirm. And one thing for the shooters when you're walking on stuff, maybe if you can't see things right away, back off your magnification, give yourself a wider field of view. You know, so you can find the target. If you're hunt, trying to run around on 42 power, trying to zero on the scope, or get in on a particular target, unless you're very, very, very practiced at that sort of thing, you're going to waste all kinds of time. And when you get to the boomer shoot, you don't have that time. So back off the magnification, find your target, zoom it back in. If you have an even halfway quality optic, it won't affect your point of impact. So we're on the black octagon with the white center dot in it. Yep, black stop sign, white center dot. Yep. We're, we've got very, very minimal. We're looking at maybe one to three, and it's a, not even a half value wind, so we, let's go with no wind. Okay, zero wind on the gun? Zero wind, center hold, ready. Dead center, connect. He put it right in the dead center of the... That's awesome. Of the white. Okay, shoot it back on target. Shoot it ready. Ready. Call it. Uh, that broke center. Looks like it. Looks like the first shot hit at 10 o'clock. The second shot hit at 1 o'clock. So I'm a little high. Oh, so that. Uh... Yeah, that little thing in the middle is not a is not a hit. Okay. Yeah, so this is one of the one of rare situation where. We have a very good spotting scope. We have a better rifle scope, so <laughs> I can I can uh, <laughs> count divots. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so we're gonna come down. There's a little black plot of paint in the middle of that circle. Have eight He's mistaken it as a bullet. Yep, Shooter ready. Ready. That broke just a hair below center. 
it's right below your last uh, shot, the okay. one that was at so two o'clock. It's part of the shot before the sound is. Okay, will I shift? Do I shift to a smaller target? Yeah, let's go to. Let's get on some boomers. Something else keep for the shooters. You know, if you get shooting out here and you're cooking along, you may want to, if while you stop and searching for a target or reloading whatever else, or you know, doing other things, don't leave your round cooking in the chamber. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> okay, now. Let that thing heat up. I'm gonna talk him. I'm gonna talk him into his next target. I'm gonna use his last. His last target is a known point because we had a thing that we're aiming at very precisely and we've identified that that's where his bullets are going. Obviously it hit it. So we that's our known point. So we're basically shifting from a known point. So I'm going to have Monty come right, traverse right. <coughs> you're going to see another white small silhouette. Got it. To the right of that, you're going to have your first boomer. Copy that. It's got a blue dot on the top of it. Okay, white seven inch boomer, blue dot. Shoot already. Shoot. Oh, so unimpressive. <laughs> you blew that thing to smithereens. Did, yeah. That was what's known as a, uh, what do they call that type of detonation? Where it doesn't go totally off? Partial. Yeah, like a partial detonation. Okay, shoot already. It'll happen sometimes out here. Uh, you, uh, you moved off to the next right one? Yeah, the next one with the green dot on the bottom. Roger. Get her ready. Same. Whoa. Here we go. Wow. That one went off. <laughs> felt that one. We can all go now. It's <laughs> actually... Okay, traversing right. One, uh, no dot on it that I can see. Next right one, roger. Shoot her ready. Same. Went right through the center of it. Yeah, I see the bullet hole. I see the, yeah. yeah, we both can see the bullet hole. So, uh... You want to tap it one more time? Let's come see down it. from that bullet see hole. One thing on the boomers, like be aware of, they're using the plastic bags, they're using the heat shrink this year. I, I don't know. Some, in the past, they've, they put a plastic baggie that actually contains the explosive mixture in there. When they get bounced around the handle, that actually settles down. So if you're going to hit the box, try to hit the bottom two-thirds, because that's where the actual explosive mixture may be. You may be hitting the top, but it may not actually go off. You may see a white poof because you're hitting the lime that they put up there for other stuff. Yeah, I don't see any... any uh Spillage. Okay, so we're gonna favor down. Roger. Shooter ready. Shoot. There we go. Theory confirmed. <laughs> okay. End of mission. All targets destroyed. Continue okay, mission. Roger that.